It's 4 o'clock on a Monday, and you know what that means. It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. This week, starring Q Reviews. Yeah, baby. Woo! Exciting stuff. And thank you, Studio Orchestra. Thank you, lovely fake audience. Let me get the chat room open and say hello to you guys in there. Where are you? There you are. Okay. Let me shrink that down so I can see myself and know that I'm still live. And hello, everybody. Uh, good to see you guys. I actually got an email after last week's show saying, why do you always say hello to everybody at the beginning of the show, meaning going down the list? And I thought, you know, it's a little bit of a time sucker, and I can understand for the people that watch... Uh, the show on uh, YouTube after the fact, but uh, you know, geez, you don't have anything better to do than complain about that. Anyway, uh, it's great to see you guys, uh, and I am going to jump right into the show today. Um, sorry, I'm getting my desktop arranged so that I can work effectively. Uh, I want to tell you guys, remind you, right at the beginning of the show, the road rally is just coming up faster than a locomotive uh, heading downhill. It is November. It th starts Thursday evening. Registration's Thursday evening, November 2nd of 2017. It goes until Sunday night about 6 p.m., uh, which is November 5th. Uh, it's shaping up really nicely. Uh, we're about 24 hours away from making the registration page live so that you guys can start registering now um, and you'll be able to register for hotel rooms although I think a few people have already snuck in and done that um, let's see what else do I have to tell you about oh I am gonna give away a copy of Robin Frederick's book shortcuts to songwriting for film and TV at the end of this episode I need you guys to remind me to do this because I forget. Um, and you know what? Uh, as long as we're on the topic of Robin Frederick's wonderful book, um, there are three books that I think if you're, you are doing instrumental cues that are essential. Now, that book is about writing songs for film and TV, um, not doing instrumentals, although Robin covers a lot of territory that's definitely applicable to instrumentals. And uh, so for that reason, the fact that you won't only write instrumentals, you should have that book. Um, Dean Crepain's excellent books, Demystifying the Cue, must have, and Demystifying the Genre, must have. I mean, the three books, I don't even know what they cost, but, uh, you know, like, I think that the three books are like 50 bucks. Well, a lot of messages in there. Uh, so if you want to be in a business, which you're trying to be, you know, if you're doing, especially if you're doing instrumental cues for film and TV, that's a business. So uh, wouldn't you spend 50 bucks on yourself to get like, you know, 10 years worth of information in three books that you could read in a week? and dramatically improve your life so there you go not your life improve your music get your music on point so that you can start earning money with it all right that's what I'm trying to tell you hey Polly how you doing uh, by the way uh, for those of you who don't know we have a lot of new people watching the show if you download a, um, a pop-up blocker um, it will solve a lot of your connectivity problems. I don't know why they were so bad last week. I just don't know. But uh, I've been told that that works really, really well. We've also got everybody who normally like has music streaming to their, you know, you know, their phone, their desktop, or whatever at the office, not doing it during this week's show. Although I can see by my little bandwidth uh, indicator here on my own screen that it should be fine, has been fine. So I don't believe that it's on this end. Plus, we've got pretty fat pipes here. And we're broadcasting at fairly low bandwidth to make it easier for you guys to get on your end. Um, I see Mojo saying, anybody else have an audio video blackout? Uh, somebody else saying, yeah. Yeah, you know what? I'm telling you, I always use Firefox. 
it works fine. Um, but then again, I'm on this side. Uh, okay, let me turn the ringer off on my phone. You ever notice that the fingerprint reading device on your phone never works as well as it should when you need it to? Uh, okay, Cox and Vox says Firefox not working. Safari is okay. Anyway, uh, so tonight's show is Q review, and what did I do with the list? People sent in instrumental cues, um, some particular questions with their cues, and I will try and address those. Um, I haven't heard this music yet. I haven't really looked at this list other than to listen to like 10 seconds of the first one to make sure that my CD worked. Um, I'm even playing the stuff off CD again so that I don't suck any bandwidth or any computing, uh, computational power out of my laptop, trying everything we can to keep this show live and fascinating. Um, so let's see, I talked about the rally, talked about the book. So let's uh, talk about the kind of stuff. I, I want a lot of uh, feedback from you guys about this stuff because if you guys are giving me feedback about what you hear, then I believe that that will sink in and you will go, oh, about your own stuff. So uh, great way to learn how to do your stuff better is by criticizing other people's work. And that's what we're going to do tonight. But we're going to be very kind and very positive about it. So the first thing that we're going to hear, um, and I'm not going to give out names, just because sometimes people out themselves on the show. Um, uh, but I will give out titles of the cues. So the first thing um, is called Heavenly Dance, and this person says, Looking forward to seeing the show today. I had this song forwarded a real shocker because I never thought of sending an instrumental before. However, I never heard a word, and you know I need a lot of improvement. I uh, never heard a word. I don't know what that means. All areas of uh, the song is Heavenly Dance. Is light piano only a couple months ago? Um, I'm not really clear on what that means, but I'm assuming this person uh, had the song forwarded. Um, I don't know what they mean about they never heard. Oh, they probably mean from the entity that it was forwarded to. Just hang tight. People, I know that people, I've talked about this a million times, that people have this mental image right up here in their heads that my song was forwarded, and in their mind they see somebody sitting on the other end, uh, you know, on a computer on the receiving end and going, where's that instrumental? I've been waiting for it my whole life. And the truth of the matter is they're getting a bunch of music, and they get to it when they get to it. Sometimes they're in a hurry and they'll listen to it right then and there. Other times they're in a relatively big hurry and they'll listen to it over the next 24 to 48 hours. Other times they're collecting stuff that's going into a collection of a certain genre and it's got a release date already assigned. It could be like let's say September and we're now in the middle of July. So they run the listing in July with Taxi, they get the music in the middle of July and they start putting the stuff in a file folder and they just keep building it until they get probably you know two or three weeks away for making the final decision on what goes on their compilation for a particular genre and then they start going through this process of elimination so you may not hear and we've had taxi members wait six years before they got an offer on something six years most of the time it happens in like anywhere from two weeks to maybe 90 days. That's probably where the, uh, what do they call that, a bump in the middle, um, the curve, the bell curve, probably falls somewhere in that two weeks to two or three months bell curve. Um, there's always the possibility, just just because you submitted for a listing um, and you found out you are forwarded, don't imagine somebody sitting on the other end just waiting for your piece of music and my gosh that's the best piece of music I've ever heard and they're gonna pick the phone up and call you right then and there <laughs> that was unusual timing remember what we talked about last week with Stephen Giles write submit forget and repeat you gotta stay productive okay you wanna keep moving forward keep feeding the pipeline and that's the trick so here we go once again I'm gonna start this little sucker up um, this is called Heavenly Dance. It was submitted for a light piano listing. 
play. Or not. I know it works because I tested it before. <laughs> it sounds like it's on its last legs. There we go. So, uh, that was called Heavenly Dance. Um, really wasn't a question about it. it I, I would say it was compositionally nice. Um, classical. Um, would that fall under Baroque? I don't know. I'm not that much of an expert, but uh, definitely of the classical variety. Um, what can I say? Uh, it was played well, it was written well, it was played pretty well, felt like it could have been slightly more fluid, and one thing I would do, which I hear all the time, so it's not just this person's piece, but um, stuff that comes from a sample catalog uh, or sample library, um, virtual pianos, um, they tend to sound less than live, less than human. Like it came down a wire. Now watch, I'll get an email. That was actually recorded on my uh, Yamaha, you know, grand piano, 10 foot grand, um, <laughs> 7 foot grand, let's try that. Uh, I personally recommend taking the output from your piano, your virtual piano, and sending it to a pair of speakers in another room and then miking those speakers probably with two microphones, one, you know, facing each speaker and try different distances and a different spread and see if you can get some room added to it so it doesn't sound like it was coming down a wire because that almost sounded too good. It sounded a little bit like a virtual piano and libraries have become sophisticated enough and there are people who've become uh, composers who are sophisticated enough that by comparison that this would sound less good than somebody who's figured out the the way to add some humanity to it. So um, <laughs> Mo Gotti says, dang, that's a great idea. It's so simple, but it works. Um, I've done that with all kinds of instruments. Uh, I've even re -miked snare drums. Uh, I think I've told you guys, take a coffee can, put a little three or four inch speaker in there, pack it with a bunch of fiberglass in the can, seal it with some uh, foam or uh, what do you call that stuff you squeeze out of the little gun, you know, and it expands, that kind of stuff. Seal the speaker in there and then tilt it on the edge of a snare drum so that part of it hits the skin, part of it hits the rim, and just send the snare drum that you've got from your uh, um, production, from your uh, Pro Tool session, send that out to that can and let it hit a real snare drum and mic it in the room like you'd mic a real snare drum. Maybe put a close mic on it and a far mic to simulate uh, what it would sound like to have overheads. So there you go. Expanding foam. There you go. Uh, okay. Uh, question. Does Taxi send our contact info with our forwarded music? Yes. Uh, uh, put it this way. Yes, we do. We actually send a document with every batch of everything that we forward that has your name, the song title, um, your email address and your phone number and there are times where we get uh, phone calls or emails from companies saying I I've tried to reach this person five times and I haven't heard back maybe because it went to their spam folder um, we've had a lot of cases where people were contacted by a, a company and then the person just froze they were so afraid that they were somehow going to get screwed by one of these companies that they just didn't even respond which is definitely not good to do Okay, uh, so there you go. Scanning, scanning, scanning. Uh, okay, let's move on to number two. This one is called French Cafe Instrumental. Um, and the gentleman who sent it in said, here is French Cafe, a French street cafe inspired cue. Would love some general feedback. Okie doke. Let's have a listen. <laughs>
All right, you guys had a lot of comments about this. Uh, so for the sake of people who are going to watch the show archived on YouTube after the fact, um, why don't you guys go ahead and spit some stuff back out now. I'll make a couple of comments while we're waiting for that stuff to hit my screen. Um, something that I, I made a note about in particular was the clapping. Uh, it, it, French Cafe, it's called uh, French Cafe Instrumental. Um, all of a sudden that made it like Zorb of the Greek for me, you know, like finger snaps and clapping. It took it out of the cafe mood. Um, so uh, it was definitely um, not Southern rock, you know what I mean? You could tell it was international. It was international flavored. But it was hard to determine that it was actually French, and I saw some people comment about that. And to me, um, the guitar sound that it started out with didn't sound, it almost sounded like it was coming out of a, an electroacoustic guitar plugged right into uh, your recording device. Um, and so that took it out, of, I could be wrong about that, maybe it was the reverb applied to it which sounded a little bit much, but it kind of lost the authenticity because of that. So now um, people are saying yes, ethnic, guitar should have not started this. Um, uh, Peter Rahill says, Gypsy, Jazz, French, not so much Cafe. Yeah, Cafe, I would think, would be a little more laid back. Uh, I mean, this is, felt like more of a celebratory, like, uh, felt almost like a Greek restaurant where, you know, people are getting ready to launch some glasses into a fireplace or something. Um, it did have good edit points. Um, gypsy feel a couple people have mentioned the word gypsy in there it did it, you know and gypsy's not that far away from french but it's kind of far away from french cafe um cafe uh, not a hundred percent of the time none of these things are ever a hundred percent etched in stone but a cafe cafe music generally has the connotation maybe of being a little more on the romantic side um so i made a note before the show post-it note um, genre, mood, and type of use. So what was the mood for this? I'm curious to see what you guys thought the mood was. Hey Jan Bars, how are you? Um, <laughs> I'm counting the days till the road rally. <laughs> Jan actually went out and got a bottle of um, Skelvis pickle, <laughs> which I, I ordered some uh, from Holland probably a year ago, he got me a bottle. I want to see you get on the plane with that. That's going to be an interesting uh, challenge for you, Jan. Anyway, uh, let's see. Um, French wedding. Um, fight breaks out in the cafe. Yeah, that happens a lot in French cafes. <laughs> Benny Hill in a French cafe. That's actually a pretty good observation. Um, the mood was upbeat. Well, I know, but um, give me something a little more definitive than that. Um, I felt a mood of activity, work, perhaps a kitchen scene. Very good, Polly. Uh, yeah, you know what? Um, oh gosh, what was the movie with the? It was like an animated movie about a mouse uh, that was a chef. Um, I think it was a Disney movie or maybe uh, DreamWorks. Um, you know that that could have been. Um, that could be, you know, busy for behind the scenes kitchen prep work uh, in a French cafe, maybe? A French wedding. It, it did feel celebratory. Ratatouille. Very good postcard helicopters. Um, Ratatouille. You know, it felt like something from Ratatouille. Uh, it, it didn't quite nail the typical cafe scene. But uh, Julia and Julia. Yeah, maybe. Um, Michael chasing a French maid. No, I don't chase French maids. I married one. No, I, I didn't. <laughs> uh, so you've seen with uh, bicyclette and baguette. Just uh, like that. That was my French right there. Uh, anyway, yeah, it, it was pretty darn close. Um, 
but it's funny, minor adjustments could be more specifically applicable. Because you have to remember, when um, you're not competing for a forward with your fellow taxi members when you leave here, it's just we decide, does this fit what's being asked for? Is the quality over the bar and is it on target enough? Now let's assume that this one did get forwarded for French Cafe um, type instrumentals and it was sent to the production music library in the receiving end and they may have gotten stuff from other composers that are already in their catalog they may have gotten you know 27 submissions from taxi members that made it through the filter uh, they may have gotten stuff just from wherever and, and now they've got to sit down they're not going to put um, 125 French Cafe instrumentals in their catalog maybe 5, 10, 15. Um, so now your piece is going to compete with the other pieces that are competing for those slots. So you've got to do everything you can to make sure that yours is easy to use because that is ease of use makes it uh, increases the probability of earning money and that's what libraries want. They want something where they can listen to it go, yeah, that would work for this, that, the other thing. Aha, that has a pretty high earning potential. I want to sign that. You would think that they would be signing the stuff that shows what a brilliant composer you are, but I would put my money on the earning potential every time. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. Let's move on to number three, and this one is called The End is Near. Ooh, hang on. I must have a sound effect for that. The End is Near. Nope, wrong one. Uh, the End is Near. Nah, guess I won't go with the sound effects after all. Okay, moving on. The End is Near. <laughs> Apparently, that might be the end of the show after that little sound effect. This one has no question with it.
All right. I'm going to let you guys drop in some comments. I made some notes. It was three minutes and 47 seconds long. Um, you know, a lot of times when uh, we say Q should be like 90 seconds, two minutes, 347 is pretty darn long. So that's going to go to another comment I'm going to make uh, that while well, I'm waiting for you guys um, to chime in here, which is it had interesting development. It developed, which a Q wants to do. Now, there's a difference between instrumentals and instrumental cues. Instrumentals are frequently more like a song structure with the vocal taken out and what I would call like melody light put back in, not note for note what the vocal melody might have been. That's more like an instrumental or a jazz song, a full-length jazz song with no vocal in it, that's an instrumental. You can also have a jazz cue, which is typically something more akin to 60 seconds, 90 seconds, two minutes long. Um, and it's got an arc. It's mostly A section. And then it's probably got like, you know, eight bars for a B section somewhere in the middle. But what cues are supposed to do, generally speaking, this isn't for every single cue ever written in every style in the world, but most of the time, cues have kind of a, a beginning, middle, and an end arc to them. They have a forward momentum. Um, they tend to move the idea get the motif, the whole thing comes together to kind of move along and keep moving along in stages. And it builds up and drops back down, and builds back up and drops back down. And then it goes to a little eight bar section to go, ooh, there's something a little different but related. I sounded like I'm from Minnesota. And then it uh, goes back to the A section and probably builds, has a crescendo and boom, some sort of big ending. I made a note that said builds momentum but needs to develop faster. And that was a problem with this one being as long as it was. You guys all felt it. Um, somebody said it, it's um, a long journey to the end. Um, needed a big stinger ending as well. Sounds good. The piano could use some other notes than those three. Um, picture and sound, high glory, <laughs> picture and sound dropped out uh, beyond my control. Sorry. Um, all the good stuff was too late because it's so long. Exactly how I felt. It, there was some good stuff in there. It just needed to happen sooner. It could have been half as long and twice as, of a, twice as effective. Therefore, increasing the money-making um, potential of that cue. Not bad. Big step in the right direction. If you're new to cues, that gets a good review. <laughs> Um, in the rhyming state of mind today. Um, you're definitely on the right track. Just tighten it up, move it along a little faster. Um, okay. Casey says it needs more cowbell. <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, let's move on. This one is called an 80s EDM song. Uh, check out my tune, please. I'd love to see what I would need to do to start doing film scores. This is an 80s-inspired instrumental. I thought it would be great for Deadpool or a Blade Runner reboot. Um, okay. So let's have a listen to this. It is called 80s EDM Song. <laughs> All righty. levels pretty low.
that come from? This is going over three minutes, so I'm going to kill it now so you guys can start commenting. So, thank you. Um, I'm going to make a general comment, and then I want you guys to repeat some of that stuff that you were saying. Uh, two general comments. First, the hi-hat was like razor blades on... It just The hi-hat was just way, way, way too thin, way too bright. The other thing is it just didn't feel like it was cohesive. It didn't feel like, uh, it just felt like a jam. And cues, instrumental cues, um, have a purpose and they have a form factor to them that kind of moves things forward. This is like, uh, let's drop acid and stare at the ceiling in a planetarium with headphones on. If you took the hi-hat out, this would work really well for that. Except for that stuff going on in the left speaker over there. Um, sounded like fireworks, like the dude lit the fuse on the 4th of July um, and the wrong stuff <laughs> at the wrong time. That really got me, uh, came out of left field. So let's see. Um, what did you guys say? Uh, the hi-hats killed me. Um, true, the pieces didn't blend together. Yeah, that middle section was just too whacked out. It lacked form. It was a hodgepodge of ideas. Yeah, um, it, it, that could have been at least two, if not three different styles of cues. Um, Peter Rahill's got his lava light on. <laughs> needs a solid title, some 80s pun or reference. It, it almost didn't even sound that 80s to me. I don't know. It, it needed quite a bit of work. Um, you know, there were little snippets of stuff in there that I think we all heard went, oh, that's interesting, that's good. But it's like it just whatever popped into the composer's mind kind of made it to the recording and it just lacked cohesion. Um, It works if you're properly stoned. Um, not that we endorse drugs on this show. This is a family show. But, you know, is, is there a difference between just stoned and properly stoned, Casey? Um, the hi-hats killed it, or killed me is a good title. There you go. Um, yeah, those hi-hats were just super, super, super thin. Um, tons of, just tons of top end on there. Um, it's funny, it's not an uncommon sound that I hear a lot. I always wonder, is there like a patch that I'm unaware of that's like super thin, ear-piercing, blood-drawing hi-hat sound that shows up on uh, on your screen? Um, Linda Colm says, Stone Cold, Stone Soul Picnic. Um, Rob Green says, Good sound needs form. Uh, anyway... There you go. That one needs some help. Um, had some sections that show potential. Okay, moving on to number five. This one is called Slap Happy. 
and there's a note attached that says, Hi, Michael. I've been in the music business too many years to mention. That makes two of us. Um, I'm new to taxi, but I've been looking at taxi for years. It seems like that's a popular thing to do. Watching the taxi episode, How to Quit Your Day Job with Chuck Henry and Matt Vanderbo caused me to pull the trigger. Um, yeah, those guys are pretty inspiring, i got to say. Um, so it's their fault, huh? I'm interested in producing instrumentals for film and TV. Hope I'm not too late to the game. Not at all. Um, you know, people ask, say that all the time. Gee, there's so many people doing it. I feel, but you know what? you, you got to really imagine the big picture. Think of an entire globe uh, of nations and cities within those nations. Just look at how many channels are on your satellite TV or your cable TV um, and then add in all the stuff now that's streamed via Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu and Apple TV. Uh, just there's so many. The market is expanding. Okay. The, yes, there are more people doing it, but there are way more people that need it uh, in shows and networks. So I'm not worried about the the lack of uh, you know. I'm not worried about the market um, being saturated anytime soon. Okay, so uh, interesting, uh, not late to the game. This track is one of my first attempts. I'd like some feedback to see if I'm somewhere in the ballpark for doing this track. And this one is called Slap Happy. So let's have a listen and find out. Here, right there. Junior 45, you and I are very much in agreement because you said Miami Vice, and so did I. So let's hear from some of you guys. Um, I also wrote down CSI Miami. Uh, I'm going to make one comment and then open it up to you guys, and that is um, the reason that we both thought of Miami Vice uh, was it sound. This one actually did sound pretty 80s. The the sounds were pretty dated sounding. Could be that you made it that way on purpose. Um, you're in the ballpark. You're getting there. Tosh Parker Gibbs said, I really like that. Music Cat said, Miami Vice. Uh, Made You Look gave it a plus one, which around here is a thumbs up. Oh, speaking of which, don't forget to subscribe and like us. I mean, seriously, would you do that? When you guys, I know you guys are watching a live show, but those of you who are watching the archive show, please make uh, YouTube uh, <laughs> like us by subscribing and liking us. Okay, uh, and there was that one section I pointed out. I, I thought that section was a cue on its own. Um, Rob Green said period between 70s and 80s. Um, the initial feel beat was good based on slap happy track name I thought it was going to be uh, one of those ukulele hand clap uh, kind of organic slappy happy clappy things but it wasn't 
Um, nice writing, but it sounds a bit too 8-bit. Uh, it, the sounds did sound dated, unless that was the intent. Um, Marcus is reminding me to give away the book. Don't forget. I'm going to do it a little later in the show because I feel like I'm on a roll right now. But thank you um, for the reminder because I will forget. Yeah, I make my kids wear name tags around the house. Um, the t Jan Barr says, the title didn't really fit, right? Yeah, it, it didn't feel happy. Uh, I mean, it wasn't sad. Slap Happy was the title. Um, I would have thought it would have been more organic and, and you know, like the ukulele, up, emotionally upbeat, uh, acoustic, organic, uh, ukulele, finger snaps, uh, cajon, hand claps kind of stuff that you would hear on a commercial for something young people buy, but it wasn't. Um, okay, I was expecting more slap bass. Interesting take on the title. Um, you know, again, not terrible. Uh, at least you, you're showing signs, the person that submitted that, showing signs of, okay, you understand it. Um, you're in the ballpark. And really, the best thing you can do, honestly, um, is incorporate the feedback that you get from the taxi screeners as well as going onto the taxi forum, which is forums with an S, forums.taxi.com, and going to the peer-to-peer -peer section. This, that is probably one of the greatest things that you can do, and almost all of our successful members, maybe 100% of them would tell you that that's how they really per perfected their craft and got there much faster was by going into the peer-to-peer -peer section and don't be shy and don't be you know don't feel like oh my gosh they're gonna hate it and I'm gonna be embarrassed in public you won't be because the people there have all been through this process and they're really really helpful and it's amazing what might take you years to learn you could probably learn in months because of the kind of concentrated feedback you get um, Okay, uh, the book, uh, Gloria's asking which book? This book, Shortcuts to Songwriting for Film and TV. Um, because it's got a bunch of great stuff in there that is also applicable to cues, so you should know about it. Um, um, hi, Vicki, how are you? Um, seriously, Vicki says about the P2P section, seriously good advice, P2P is the way. Virtually every single one of our successful members for as long as we've had the forum, which I think is probably about 15 years, would tell you that getting advice from your fellow members that have been there and done it, greatest thing in the world. Um, all right, let's move on. Going to number six. Um, and this one is called Super Cool.
several people commenting that it didn't develop fast enough. They're waiting for the like, oh, that's the cool part. Um, it kind of laid there like a lox. Uh, and one of the questions that this gentleman asked, uh, how's the mix? Is there too much presence in the two to five K range uh, to sit behind dialogue? Should I be ducking these frequencies out of the mix so it sits better behind dialogue? Thanks. Um, generally speaking, again, there are no absolutes. My experience back in the day is that it's the busyness of the composition um, or maybe something like a sax solo or a screaming guitar solo that's generally going to make it hard for dialogue to be heard the way it should be heard. Um, not so much taking something that's more of a laid back piece like this and, and dipping out, you know, two to five K probably not that big of an issue for a piece like this. Just not that big, big, busy. Um, let's see what you guys said a little too staccato, um, too much of one line. I would agree with that. Uh, needs a bigger button with all sounds coming to an end uh, together. Yeah, the ending was a little weird on that, I've got to say. Um, sounds like a song they just removed the vocals from. Needs a melody. By the way, somebody said early on, did I just hear vocals in there? There were some cool vocalizations, kind of a ah, thing. Um, now that didn't exactly replicate it, did it? Um, and, and frankly, most of the time, I think there are a lot of instances where vocalizations will work as long as there aren't actual words but like la's or oo's if the vocals are being um, used like a synth pad or is some sort of texture most of the time that's not a problem um, I think he says I found it a bit repetitive but there are good elements in there and frankly let's face it almost all instrumental cues, that's, that really might be a good summary of the craft of building great instrumental cues, is that you do want something that's repetitive from beginning to end, but you want to execute it in such a way that it feels like it's moving forward and has dynamics and has interest so that it doesn't sound repetitive, but it is so that it's easy to edit. And music is rarely, if ever, the star especially when it comes to instrumental cues. So their job is to support a mood or an emotion or a texture or a feeling, something visceral in a scene. So they can be fairly repetitive. It's just they got to feel like they're moving. Um, it's part of learning to listen. Imagine how a cue will sound under dialogue. That's good advice. Uh, Kano says he doesn't think supervisors edit, but the editors might edit. Yeah, video editor, it, it depends what kind of project. You know, if it's a, a, a drama or if it's a reality show or if it's a feature film, who does what, um, the roles kind of change. But for a lot of TV stuff, um, a, a supervi there are some supervisors who actually will edit. They'll suggest edits more often than not. They may be working late at night and they hear a piece of music and they want to show the editor on their show how they hear that piece of music. So they may do a quick down and dirty edit, say, start it there, end it there, lay it under this scene. Um, by the way, totally, uh, totally off subject. For those of you who might be Eagles fans and were saddened as I was the day that Glenn Fry passed away, probably like a year and a half ago, I, I greeted the news that his son Deacon, who's like 24, 25 years old, was joining the Eagles because Don Henley uh, would be a pretty tough guy to work with or work for, but I'm pretty sure he, he was close enough to the Glenn to Glenn Fry's family that Deacon grew up around Henley. But could you imagine, they did a concert uh, Friday night here in LA at Dodger Stadium uh, as part of the classic West series that ran this past weekend, both Friday, oh, Saturday night, Sunday night, sorry. Anyway, um, I gotta hand it to the kid, he pulled it off. First of all, he grew his hair out long, so he looked like his dad in the early days of the Eagles. He took his sunglasses, I have a prop, and propped him up on his head like that. And uh, which his dad used to do. And he wore a Dodgers jersey, which his dad used to do. And I mean, that kid, you got to give him a lot of credit for just 
doing it. Uh, and I, I give the Eagles a lot of credit for letting him do it, but it wasn't like a, a – they did it for emotional reasons, but the kid is talented. I actually researched – watched some old YouTube videos of Glenn Fry and his son – and Don was and his son jamming at the House of Blues, I think, for a charity event or something. And I got to say, uh, Glenn Fry's kid, Deacon, actually a pretty darn good guitar player. Um, and he held his own on stage with the Eagles, who also have now added uh, Vince Gill to the band. And Vince Gill, great singer, great songwriter, incredibly talented guitar player, great choice for the band. Anyway, I thought the whole thing was great. Um, and just for those of you who are Eagles fans, uh, when the show is over, go Google uh, Deacon Fry playing with the Eagles at Dodger Stadium this weekend. It'll put a lump in your throat. Anyway, I'm sure that uh, Glenn Fry's wife and Deacon's mom had to be just like welling up with tears with just tons of emotion. It's a pretty special thing. Okay. Uh, Anyway, okay, back to work. Um, let's move on. This one is called Follow the Leader. Uh, no question. This, is, this song was submitted by Kim Jong-un from North Korea. I'm kidding. Please don't take me seriously. Follow the Leader. Get it? knew exactly where that was going to end and how it was going to end, right? That, for my money, was an A-plus cue. That was, that's where the bar is. Well executed, the instrument sounds were great, um, had good edit points, it had great forward movement, had great interest, um, clearly a quirky dramedy cue, um, somebody's on the hunt for something or sneaking around, Man, so many ways he could use that, and it didn't sound like every other one out there. It had most of the same instruments, but what did I hear in there? Uh, you know what? Let's go back to the top of that one. It's so good that I want to showcase it. Um, let's listen and talk about it as it's playing. Ants emptying the fridge. <laughs> there you go. You know what? Let's... Take the, what was the movie before with the ratatouille? Okay, so imagine the kitchen's closed, the rats are busy at work, uh, scampering around doing their thing. Soon? section.
Soon. Look how sparse it is and how well thought out the parts are. Yay! That one gets an A. I love it. Um, I'm going to throw out a name there on this one. That was Christopher Jones. I hope you're uh, watching the show. I hope you're in the chat room. Take a bow, Christopher, because that was excellent work. Uh, just really, really proud of you, and that's a great sounding cue. It's a well-composed cue. It's a well-produced cue. We can all imagine several different kinds of scenes that could be used in, um, and it doesn't sound like every other dramedy cue. So it's got all the elements that make it usable. Excellent, excellent job. All right, very, very, man, let's just end the show there. <laughs> um, Okay, this next one is called Wandering at Night. And the question that follows it is, I submitted it for a taxi listing, uh, listing number Y170710EI for electronic instrumental cues. I'd like to know if I'm in the ballpark for listing requirements. Thanks in advance. I can't tell you because I don't have this cue. I didn't look at this stuff before the show. I don't have the listing requirements printed out in front of me. Um... Okay. Uh, anyway, let's listen to it um, and see if we like it. This is called Wandering at Night. Okay, while we're waiting for you guys to chime in, because I know there's like a 20 second lag time, I will say that it just felt inconsistent from top to bottom. It, uh, you know, a lot of times we say in the listings that we want stuff to stick with a central theme or a central motif from top to bottom. It's because you're not scoring a film that's got scene changes. Generally speaking, a cue is used within one scene to kind of support one mood or one thing that's going on in the scene and this actually felt like it, it 
lacked that cohesiveness. It didn't feel like it was one thing. Um, it could have some couple people have commented about the squeaky chair. Might have been me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me cracking knuckles. Um, it's uh, honestly, I don't have a listing in front of me, so I can't say if it works for that listing or not. It just sounds dated and like you're, oh, I can make instrumental stuff if I just do this and repeat it. Oh, I wonder maybe if I do that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It, do, it sounds like you were learning but you hadn't quite figured it all out yet, but you will by being around this community of people going on the forum into the peer-to-peer -peer section, come to the road rally in November. I don't, look, the road rally is free for every taxi member and a guest. We don't make a penny if you come or you don't. What we do get out of the deal is people come and they learn so much. They go home like, holy crap, I can't believe I just learned that. I've been waiting my whole life um, to get this information. I just got it all in a weekend. And usually it's the springboard for their careers moving along much faster, much better than if they'd not come to a road rally. So that's why I get excited about having you guys come is that it's going to make you a productive money earning taxi member much faster than if you don't come. And same thing could be said for the peer to peer section of the forum at forums with an S forums.taxi.com peer to peer section. All these things contribute and any of our members who are successful being, you know, successful meaning making a couple grand a year to tens of thousands a year up to six figure members they all have these things in common so why wouldn't you be doing what they're doing rather than operating isolated alone in a room at night by yourself wondering am i doing the right thing you'll find out in a weekend you'll be surrounded by really warm friendly like-minded people who are supportive that will the lights will go on your head will explode you won't be able to get you'll just be like so anxious to get home back in your studio and start applying what you learned and just watch where you are a year after that will be like night and day compared to where you're at before you go to the rally adriana says the road rally is the best she's right she's absolutely right um, Mountain Steve says the road rally is kick-ass and well worth the whole annual membership fee. Yes, it is. I mean, look, you go to other conventions that, frankly, I've never been to one as good as the road rally. They may have better, better staging, better lighting, um, maybe you know a more famous guest on their stage or some or stuff like that. But you won't find more actionable. Um, advice that you can take home and actually start using to make a real difference in your life than you will at the road rally. You won't find a more supportive community and you probably won't find nearly as many opportunities to connect with um, composers for collaborations and connect with, with, it's amazing how many of the publishers and label people and music supervisors and what have you hang out at, at the bar at night and you can just meet them, in, I mean, frankly, in the restroom, in the restaurant, uh, in the elevator. You want to stay at the hotel the road rally is at. Yes, you can save like 30 bucks a night and stay at a hotel that's a couple blocks away. But really, are you going to save $90 over the course of a weekend? And, and man, the elevator, greatest place in the world. I mean, I'm not recommending that you should be a stalker or anything. No, I'm not. Um, if you see somebody that you want to meet come off of a panel and they're going to get mobbed by people um, after they come off the stage, eventually they're going to make their way either to the bar, to the restroom, or to the elevator. The elevator is the best place to meet them um, because then you walk in, you shake his or her hand and say, man, I was just in the ballroom for that panel. I thought the information you gave out was awesome and just leave it there. Don't whip out a CD. Don't whip out a thumb drive. Don't say, and by the way, my name is Michael Lasco and you should know me and you should know my music because I'm the greatest composer that ever lived. No, what you do is when you compliment him or her for what a great job they did on the panel or in a class that you were just in at the Road Rally, um, they're going to say, well, that, that's really nice of you to say that. Uh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Dallas. Great. What kind of music do you do? I'm a composer. What kind of stuff do you do? Oh, mostly TV cues for reality TV. Now, if you're smart, the person that you stalked and followed into the elevator is somebody that's got a library that 
does a lot of that stuff or needs a lot of it. And at the point where they ask you, what kind of music do you do? Don't be so quick to reach into your briefcase or your pocket or your plastic bag and pull something out. Let them say to you, do you have anything with you? That's when you pull it out and you give it to them. That's how it's done. Okay. Um, Ah, oh, Adriana just reminded me. She sent me an email telling me that she got two tickets from Indianapolis to LA. I'm so sorry I blew that. Um, like two weeks ago, she sent me an email or a, something, an email or yeah, something, and said, by the way, I just got a really good deal. So she got two tickets on Southwest from Indianapolis to LA for um, under $300 for both of them. So go check it out you guys I mean, seriously for the price of just going to one of the other conventions it's not as good you're gonna spend that amount of money um, let's say no, I'm not gonna say uh, I'm not gonna name a particular one but there is another one um, that's about the same size as the road rally um, I don't personally think I've been there a bunch of times I don't think it's got the warmth the supportive vibe or the amount of actionable advice that you get at the Red Rally, but it's a well-known, big, well-branded convention. And I think it's like $365 a ticket. Well, taxi is $300 a year to belong to taxi and get 1,200 opportunities, plus get two tickets to the Road Rally. So there you go, where's the value? It's with taxi. Um, Sherry Marcus, Sherry Milano, Sherry Marcus Milano, Sherry Milano Marcus says she just got uh, two tickets from Philly to LA for 406 bucks. That's $203 a person. Really? How is that even possible? Wow. Jan Bars wants to know if you get a ticket like that from Holland for that price. Uh, oh, she said, Sherry says that's for last year. I mean, seriously, the deals are out there. Don't wait until nine days before the rally and then decide you're going to come and you're going to find out you're going to pay up the wazoo for your hotel room, which the hotel rooms are 135 bucks a night. When you get down to the last 30 days, they go up because we run out of the rooms that were allocated at our price point and the rooms go from like 135 a night to 169 or 189 dollars a night. Buy your tickets early, get your rooms reserved early, make the road rally inexpensive, spend all your money on booze at the bar, that way you meet the cool people. Um, okay, let's, we got time to do more. Let's listen to number nine. Uh, this one is called Anxiety and has no question attached to it. Let's see if it makes me feel anxious.
Ed Busicker says, car chase shot from a helicopter. I got my new little drone about 10 days ago, two weeks ago. Uh, what's it called? It is called a DJI Spark. Check that baby out. Uh, Google the DJI Spark after the show. Love that thing. Can't say enough good stuff about it. Um, okay, so the title of that again was Anxiety. I personally didn't think it created that much. I'm not even, am I sweating? No, look at that, no sweat. Um, it didn't create that much anxiety, but it, it was a pretty good tension cue. I made a note if I can find it on my page. Um, where did I write that? I just wrote tension and I can't even, oh, tension forward. Uh, it had a sense of moving forward. It, it had some development. Um, not bad. Uh, what did you guys think? Uh, more score than underscore. That's true. Uh, DJI Spark, four ninety nine. Yes, it was. I've been waiting for like two years to find the right drone before it, because most of them I buy like thirty bucks, fifty bucks. I've uh, been flying them for like six or seven years anyway. Uh, what do I do with drones anyway? So far, I just shoot a lot of uh, video of mountains and other stuff. Um, I won't take it over 10 feet in my backyard because I don't want to piss off my neighbors or make them feel like they're being watched. Um, you can race them. Um, It's a good tension and light action. Yeah, it felt more like, uh, almost like light action, not intense action. But yeah, it had a sense of, of forward movement, which is a good thing. Um, I really got you guys off subject with the mention of the drones. <laughs> good cue, wrong title. You know, that brings up a great point, Casey, and I'd like to address that issue right now for those of you who haven't heard me talk about this ad nauseum, which is... Titles are important, um, and you should make sure that you title your stuff well because people are going to scan a list. Um, video editors are laying music into reality shows. Music supervisors that are looking for stuff to pick to hand off to the editors. Um, a lot of people uh, scan, you know, look, they don't get three things and sit there and listen all the way through to them, go, ooh, that person's a really excellent composer. I think I'll use that piece based on what a musical genius she is. Not how it happens. But they do scan a list of probably dozens, maybe hundreds uh, of cues and stuff that looks in title, or as I like to say, titularly. I don't know if that's right, but they like to, they look at the titles. There is a word for that. And they look and see if the title um, telegraphs what the music is going to sound like. That's where they're going to go first, oftentimes. So there you go. Um, don't forget to give away Robin's book. Okay, I will do that as we get closer to 530. Thank you. Um, MJ Green said, I don't say it working under dialogue, but a good standalone if you tone down the high and super huge mosquito sound. <laughs> um, there was a movie, I've referred to it on the show before, called The Kingdom. Um, and in The Kingdom, there's a scene where there's a car chase, and it's the helicopter view down on the car chase, looking down. Uh, if the you know, if they had me around, I could have shot it with my drone. But um, the thing is actually that good. The, the cinematic quality of the shots, it gets amazing. But I digress. Anyway, um, yes, this piece would be good for, a, you know, like uh, a cinematic view down on a car chase would be good. Um, it wouldn't be good for a car chase. Funny how the nuances matter. Um, a car chase like the movie Bullet that's like street level in San Francisco with a bunch of bam, 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 quick edits and a lot of crash, bang, boom stuff going on. Wouldn't be good for that. But, you know, if the scene is a car chase from above and it's got a more legato feel to the scene, this would be good for that. Um... Linda Cullum says, I've got her watching Billions now. Awesome. Great show, isn't it? I mean, the acting in that show, I think, is mind-blowing. The character development, mind-blowing. Um, and the music supervisor that I believe has done many, if not most, of the episodes, 
Um, I believe this guy named Jim Black, and he is on my list of people to see if I can get him um, to join us for the road rally. I stand in awe and have a really deep appreciation for music supervisors that know it's not just about picking great songs or picking one great piece of music. The, the deeper, richer aspect of what they do is helping the storytelling by enhancing the mood, enhancing the scene, enhancing what's behind somebody's eyes in a scene. And there was something, one of those scenes, I think it was the second to last episode of last year's season, um, towards the end of the show, I think it was like episode 11, uh, last 10 minutes, there was a song that ran across three different storylines that all interconnected um, and a lot of edits and the song chosen works so well under all three of them rhythmically, emotionally, mood wise, um, the tempo of the cutting of the editing, everything about it just all came together, literally made the hair of my arm stand up. And afterwards when I checked it, it was, um, what I say, Jim Black, right? Uh, was the music supervisor on it? I want to ask that dude some questions. Okay, uh, moving on. Let's go to number 10, which is called Get Ready to Run. Um, the question is, do you think this is, a, is signable and usable? I'm into my second year of taxi membership and still haven't had anything signed. I need some encouragement. Um, there's so many variables. Could be that you're reading the listings a little wrong, could be that you're not submitting enough, could be that you're submitting too much and too wildly. There's so many variables I don't know that I can zero in. A lot of times it's not based on the quality of the music, but let's find out if we can give you some help here. This is Get Ready to Run. himself. Uh, so that was Glenn Johnson's uh, cue called Get Ready to Run. Um, tons of potential. Well executed, some really cool sounds. Um, would have been, would be great in the show Robots. I just feel like something arrangement wise like it, uh, it didn't develop as fast as it could have. I also felt like you might have two cues in there, but there's a lot that's really, really good about that. Um, and 
you know that's man I wish I had one of my library owner friends sitting here with me because they would say exactly what I just said they would say a lot of potential there not quite right you know they might pick up the phone and call you and say you know if you took this section and started out with just two bars of that then went right into this like uh, I love that rubber bandy sounding um, uh, synth you start out with uh, Vicky says, post this up on peer to peer. It's cool, but needs meat and potatoes first. Yeah, you're right on the edge. You're very, very close. You will get forwarded. You will get signed. You will get placements. I predict that in your future. Go on peer to peer and please come to the road rally because you're you're that close. You know, you're you're that close, not that far. All right. So uh, there you go. Um, Wendy Landers is leaving, but Wendy. <laughs> All right. Um, you know what? I've got to give the book away, and I got to end the show at five thirty tonight. Um, and I believe, yeah, I've got the book right here. So here's what we're gonna do: is I'm gonna hold the book up. I just look like a tarp in there for a second. That's a, a variety of fish. That's a very un usual mouth. Um, I'm going to hold the book up and you guys, uh, I've had library owners on the show before. <laughs> I've had several of them. Uh, Mary Band. Um, okay, so I'm going to hold the book up and then you guys, everybody who doesn't, if you already have the book, don't try and win it. Be nice to your fellow people. Um, you know what, Mark? I will save this CD. Mark Himley says, oh, bummer. I was hoping to get reviewed. I will save the CD, and we've still got, let's see, six more to go on here. So even if I hadn't talked about the Eagles or my drone, we still wouldn't have made it through. So we will use those on another show, I promise, okay? Um, but here's what I'm going to do is you guys type in plus one if you don't already have the book yet and would like to have it and Matthew who is sitting about 75 feet away from me at the other end of the office is going to run his finger up and down the list with his eye shot and then go bingo bango and whoever he lands on that's got a plus one to their name is going to get a copy of Robin Frederick's book Shortcuts to Songwriting for Film and TV let me give you a great little exercise Seriously, go Google this book or just search the book on Amazon. Look at the table of contents. Just go into, you know how they let you look inside the book? Look at the table of contents and you will find stuff just in the table of contents that will make you better. All right. And Matthew is going to pick somebody out right now. And then he's going to type in there and let us know who he picked out. And then that person needs to send their ground email, or not ground email, their ground address to Matt, not Matthew, but Matt at taxi.com. And he will take this very book from me and stick in an envelope and send it to you. Unless your name is Jan Bars, because I'll give you one at the road rally for being so nice to bring me that bottle of Skelvis Speckle. Okay, Matt, pick somebody. Who did you pick? Let's find out. <laughs> Everybody just stopped. Um, I want to go back. Uh, was it Christopher Jones that had the follow? Was that the thing that was so good? Yeah, it was, I believe. Um, that was just amazing. Uh, hey, Jan, uh, happy to do it, dude. If you're bringing me a bottle of Scalvis Peckle and <laughs> saving me $75 to get it here from Holland, you betcha I'll give you a book. This is Michael. I know. Who's the winner? Oh, Save Nina. Save Nina? Yeah. I just 
Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, so, Savvy, Nina, you won. And uh, Matt just sent you a PM, so send him back your address and we will mail it out to you. Um, should we go back one more time and listen to what I think is the best cue that we heard on the show today? Um, I think it was number seven. Let's find out. Yep. such a great cue. That really is perfect. There was nothing I would change about that. So for those of you who didn't get played, just know that uh, I will hang on to the stuff and we'll incorporate it in an upcoming show. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned some stuff. Remember the Taxi Road Rally is coming up November 2nd through the 5th here in Los Angeles. Seriously, start saving your money now. Put it away. Allocate your money. Think about it. If you drop, you know, 300 bucks on a plane ticket and 400 bucks on hotel rooms. There's $700 um, and a couple hundred bucks for miscellany like food and booze, whatever. You know, yeah, you might drop if you're coming from the other side of the country like $1,000 to come to the road rally. But the convention is free and you get to bring another person you, so you can defray the cost of the room by having a roommate or bring your wife and do a little touring around California or your husband and do a little touring after the rally or before the rally. But you're trying to get into a business. You know, and, and I don't know why it is the creative people think, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm creative. Therefore, people should just love me because I'm cool and creative. No, it, it's a business. If you were going to, going to open a pizza shop or a car wash or a house painting company or a software company or a shoe factory or any other business, you would go, yeah, you got to invest something. You got to, you know, invest some money to make some money. Well, dropping a thousand dollars to have something that dramatically improves your chances of making that money back, making that investment back, you got to come to the road rally. All these people, your friends in taxi, are not lying to you. It really is that good. So, subscribe and like us. We will see you next week. I think. I think next week Richard's joining us. Um, ah. I'm so bad with names. <laughs> anyway, if it's what I think it is, I think my buddy Richard's going to be here on the show next week. And uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you for joining us. See you next week for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. Registration opens up probably 24 hours for the road ride.